Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's your boy, Tissel here, and welcome to the third part of everything about Sonic's homing attack. In today's episode, we're going to be covering how to utilize Sonic's homing attack and what it's best used for. So, one of the greatest strengths about homing attack is that it's amazing for pushing the advantage and doing follow-ups. Homing attack is a tool that locks on the opponent and can be charged. That means regardless of your position, you can always time a follow-up attack or a counter-attack on your opponent. Homing attack should be viewed as an extension of Sonic's mobility. Think of it as if it's like a third jump. For example, when you go for a spin dash combo, sometimes you gotta go for a double jump. But in some scenarios, your double jump just won't be able to make it. This is when you recognize that the range for a homing attack is a lot further than any jump you have. So in scenarios like this, you can go for a homing attack to follow up. As mentioned before, the range is huge for homing attack. Take advantage of this. And because homing attack locks on in every direction and you can control the timing of it, it's a very strong tool for covering your opponent's options when they're in disadvantage. Here's an example. So in this instance, I'm throwing Pyre off stage, but now I've thrown her so far off stage that she has to use her double jump in order to make it back to the stage. So I use homing attack to stall there, and then I wait for her to use her double jump, and then I immediately punish it. Because I was able to take away her jump, she would not be able to make it back to the stage, and I was able to get an early stop. You should abuse this in instances where you recognize your opponent is forced to use an option that you can punish off stage. This is also extremely strong against slow and reactable recoveries that can be exploited with an attack. And for this example, Young Link is forced to go for an up B here. I know he has to go for it, that's the only way he's going to make it back. So, because it's such a slow and reactable option, and because it's vulnerable, I know I can charge a homing attack here, wait for him to commit to it, and then punish him for it. You should also pay attention to when your opponents are limited with their options on stage as well. For example, when you put your opponent into tumble and they fall into a tech chase situation, they are limited in the options that they can choose. They can either neutral get up, roll, or get up attack. So you should be using homing attack to stall and wait for the get up option and once you react to it you can punish it. To put it simply, homing attack is coverage. It covers options. You have to scout out for your opponent's options and what they can do and use homing attack to punish it. And that's all the time that we have for today. If you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to like and share it and I will be coming out with a part 4 soon so stay tuned for that. With that being said, catch you guys next time.